Welcome to the shooting show. This week we have a grouse shooting special. We're shooting driven grouse at Farndale Moor, North Yorkshire, where I used to be keeper, and it was great to be back. Driven grouse shooting is often considered to be in the lavish luxury category and our hotel for the weekend certainly endorsed that perception. Our base was the superb Feversham Arms situated in the heart of Helmsley in North Yorkshire. I was excited to be back on home turf and honoured to captain the gun team of the very moor where I used to be one of the keepers. Travelling up with colleague and internet TV competitor Charlie Jacoby the excitement was high. Charlie was shooting double guns that had some family history attached to them. Can I get them out? Yes. It was very exciting. My great grandfather was a shooting writer, like me. And in 1892, he had enough money from sending his articles to buy a pair of Stephen Grant. This is number two. This had a 28 inch barrel, which my grandfather stuck on it in the 1950s. And he achieved that by selling the number one. Um, now, it was a perfectly good barrel by Roper of Kent. However, um, I had it re sleeved 30 inches to match this one which is number one, which is the original barrel, which has already been received. Oh, don't drop them. <laughs> and um, pieces, don't bang them together. So I went to Graham McKinley in Glasgow, and he has done the most magnificent job. Now, if you have all the time in the world, I'll tell you all about the job again. He has worked absolute wonders. Now, if you go to Graham McKinley, he's like a stone, I'm like a rabbit, and I didn't have a chance. But uh, I, I can show you all the bits he did to the other gun as well. It was £5,000, but it was very well spent for a day on grouse with your great grandfather's double guns. Magic. The day starts with Farndale headkeeper Bernard Moss drawing book numbers for the first drive. He also gives a concise safety talk explaining how to place and use shooting sticks in the butts for the benefit of those guns who haven't shot driven grouse before. We head up to the moor and prepare for the first drive. Visibility is poor with low lying cloud and the rain starting to increase in severity. Charlie sets two and assembles a family heirlooms. Despite the weather conditions, hopes are high and we are anticipating some good sport. Sure enough, it isn't long before the first coveys start to stream over and we get our first grouse in the bag. The flankers come in and the beaters near the butts, signalling the end of the drive. Drive over and the pickers up come into play. Spaniels and labs sweep behind the butts for lost grouse. Spirits are high after the first drive despite the rain. 
Moving on to the next line of boats, a loader is a little overly optimistic about the weather. Well, we can't grumble because it's been... <laughs> we've had a fair, a fair <laughs> summer, but we've had a terrible spring. Well, I'm just hoping this is going to be good for when we go to Scotland. The guns prepare for the second drive. Wes Stanson, an accomplished clear shot, is one of the guns that has never shot driven grouse before, but he quickly proves he can hold his own. <laughs> Lost sight of them. Well done. Put my waterproof coat back on now, please. <laughs> Today it's the first time I've shot double guns in the field. I've done it a few times at Royal Barks and uh, E.J. Churchill on uh, on flushes, but it's the first time I'd actually been out in the field on live quarry. Uh, my loader, uh, Tassa, was really good company. He's far more experienced than I am when it comes to grouse and he gave me a lot of good pointers on the day and um, kept a gun uh, by my side when I'd got an empty one. So uh, it was, uh, I, I, it took me a little while to get used to it as opposed to trying to load myself. But after, a, after the first drive, really, I got used to picking up the gun and having another couple of shots behind. The guns I shot today were a pair of Browning 525 grade ones, not a matched pair of uh, Brownings, but a pair nonetheless. Um, I've shot Brownings for many years. I like the way they handle, I understand the way they handle. I've got Brettas as well, but um, those are the guns I chose to shoot with today, and uh, they performed admirably in the wet. I was also using 525 today, but the 525 Lite. Uh, this was a, a gun that I bought, it fitted me rather well, so I purchased it as a strategic gift for the wife. Uh, she probably doesn't know I used it on the day, but I've shot driven grouse before. I was a little rusty. It's been two years since I've been in the boat. Uh, there's a lot of birds coming through very, very fast indeed. Uh, but once I picked up the speed, I shot quite well. Uh, managed to get uh, seven and a half brace for my day. So I was quite pleased with that. Get on. Go on. The rain is only getting worse and the skies have darkened as the day has gone on. Combined with the exceptionally fast flying birds, this is certainly challenging sport. After missing four in a row, I rest the gun to regain some composure and then take a right and a left. The last two drives will be taken from the same line of butts. Driven first from one direction, the final drive will then be returned. I didn't really know what to expect uh, today in terms of what the uh, grass would be like. Uh, people have described it to me as Olympic track 
in reverse, where they go like uh, bats out of hell, but towards you rather than away from you. Uh, but over the years, I've shot quite a bit of skeet to a, to a reasonably high standard, and I would suggest that going and shooting some Olympic skeet is probably the best practice for shooting driven grouse. When the grouse started to come through, they came through very low and very fast. Now, on any uh, low, low game shoot, you'd be crucified for shooting anything that low, and it just took me a while to realise that was actually a legitimate thing to shoot at uh, when it came over. So once I got used to that after the first drive, um, settled down and started to shoot reasonably well. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about putting any maintained lead on them, it was just swing through the line of the bird, give enough lead, pull the trigger, and uh, most of them died as a result. The rain has still not let up, and as the day draws to a close, the beaters come into the line for the last time. No doubt glad their long day is over. The fallen grouse from the final drive are gathered in, tallied up and taken to the game cart. So Wesley, you shot very well today. Thank you. Novice grouse shot, first time driven grouse and That's double right. guns. That's right, yeah. Uh, what did you make of the day? Wet. Uh, it absolutely poured with rain for... All day. Well, actually, there was, a, there was a moment of about 14 seconds when it wasn't raining around about lunchtime, but I actually may have been in the car at that point. But uh, no, it did pour with rain, but it didn't really put a dampener on the whole day. It was the first time I shot grouse. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. I'd heard stories about how fast they fly. Uh, but what I did do, although I'm an experienced shot uh, and a reasonably good game shot, um, I did want to make sure that I was adequately prepared. So um, myself and uh, at least two of the other guns went to EJ Churchill's shooting ground, practiced on the grouse, but listened to people who've done a lot of it. So we knew what to expect on the day, even though none of us had uh, actually shot a real live grouse before. Fandale Moore's very, very well looked after. It's perfectly manicured, uh, lots of fires through it, different heights of heather, uh, big bilberry banks. Uh, it's a long, narrow mower, and uh, it's a mower that you can almost shoot every year. It's always got grouse, uh, some years more than others, but there's not many years where they don't shoot. Charlie Jacoby has put his great-grandfather's guns to good use and shows the extent of the inclement conditions braved by both guns and beaters. That said, the wet weather didn't dampen any enthusiasm. This is the Shooting Show News. Scotland is the latest destination for Norwegian hunters, after a new air link opened between the two countries. BMI will run flights between Aberdeen and Christiansund on Norway's west coast, giving sportsmen from Norway direct access to Scotland's array of field sports. The Scottish Country Sports Tourism Group said it was delighted with the news and looked forward to welcoming Norwegians for stalking, fishing and shooting trips. The British Deer Society has revamped its deer management course to better fit into the busy lives of stalkers and land managers. The course will now run over three days instead of five and there's been a £130 reduction in its price. The BDS said the reduction in length should result in an overall increase in applications, all to the benefit of deer populations. More stalking news in Sporting Rifle magazine. The Countryside Alliance has spoken out after the BBC's Country File magazine refused to run publicity for it on political grounds. The magazine had initially approached the Alliance for advertising, but later vetoed the advert because of the Alliance's political lobbying, with hunting the most likely cause. An Alliance spokesperson said, if proof was needed that the BBC liked to offer a sanitised version of the countryside that bears very little resemblance to the reality, this is it. Europe's animals are on the rise. That's what a new report from the Zoological Society says. Species such as the European bison, the Eurasian beaver, the white-headed duck, the pink-footed goose and the barnacle goose have increased by up to 3,000% over the last 50 years. Numbers of brown bear have doubled and wolf populations have climbed by 30%. Northern chamois has increased in both abundance and distribution. And finally, 
clay shooting magazine is kicking off its hunt for the clay ground of the year 2013. Readers of the magazine will be able to nominate their favourite grounds using a form found in the mag or online. People making nominations will be automatically entered into a prize draw and there will be regional accolades given out as well as the main award. More information in the next issue of Clay Shooting out next week. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.